All right, let's pray. Uh, Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for this day. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus. And uh, Lord, we just uh, lift tonight's teaching up to you. And uh, may we learn some things uh, in this uh, chapter of Nehemiah 3. And there's some awesome, uh, awesome things in this chapter, Lord. Thank you for giving them to us through your word. And uh, Father, we just uh, pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so Nehemiah 3. And I will attempt to read this because there's a lot of names in here. I'm not going to, maybe Steve could, but then I'll pronounce it wrong after he said it. So I'm just going to do it myself. <laughs> All right. Then Elisha, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priest, and built the sheep gate. They consecrated it and hung its doors. They built it as far as the Tower of the Hundred and consecrated it. Then as far as the Tower of Hanel, next to Elisha, the men of Jericho built. And next to them, Zakur, the son of Emir, built. Also the sons of Hassan Ada built the fish gate. Um, they laid its beams and hung its doors and its bolts and bars. And next to them, Merimoth, the son of Uriah, the son of Kaz, made repairs. Next to them, Meshulam, the son of Berechakiah, the son of Meshizabul, made repairs. Next to them, Zadok, the son of Banana, uh, made repairs. Next to them, the Tekoites made repairs, but their nobles did not put their shoulders to the work of the Lord. Moreover, Jehoiada, the son of Peshiah, and Meshulam, the son of Besodiah, repaired the old gate. They laid its beams and hung its doors with its bolts and bars. And next to them, Melatiah, the Gibeonite, Jadon, the Meroothite, the men of Gibeon and Mizpah repaired the residence of the governor of the region beyond the river. Uh, next to him, Uzziel, the son of Harhaiah, one of the goldsmiths, there you go, Craig, made repairs. Also next to Hananiah, one of the perfumers made repairs, and they fortified Jerusalem as far as the broad wall. Next to them, Rephaiah, the son of Hur, leader of half the district of Jerusalem, made repairs. Next to them, Jediah, the son of Harumph, uh, made repairs in front of the house. And next to him, Hattush, the son of Hashab Naiah, made repairs. And my secretary left a little section out, so I'm going to go back here. Um, Malkajiah, the son of Harim, and Hashub, the son of Pahath Moab, uh, repaired another section as well as the tower of the ovens. And next to him, Shalom, the son of Haloesh, leader of the district of Jerusalem, he and his daughters made repairs. Hanun and the inhabitants of the Zenoa repaired the valley gate. They built it, hung its doors uh, with its bolts and bars, and repaired a thousand cubits of the wall as far as the refuge gate. Malk I Jah, the son of Rechab, leader of the district of Beth Hakserum, repaired the refuse gate. He built it and he hung its doors with its bolts and bars. Shalun, the son of Kohazeth, uh, leader of the district of Mizpah, repaired the fountain gate. He built it, covered it hung its doors with its bolts and bars, repaired the wall of the pool of Selah by the king's garden as far as the stairs that could go down from the city of David. After him, Nehemiah, the son of Azbuk, uh, leader of the half-district of Beth Zer, made repairs as far as the place in front of the tombs of David. Oops, that would be me. Um, to the man pool as far as the house of the mighty. After him, the Levites, under Rehum, the son of Benai, made repairs. Next to him, Hashabiah, 
leader of half the district of Kel Ki Ke Kila made repairs for his district. After him, the brethren under Bavaya, the son of Hinadad, leader of the other half of the district of Ke Ila, made repairs. And next to him, Ezer, the son of Jeshua, the leader of Mizpah, repaired another section in front of the ascent to the armory at the buttress. After him, Baruch, the son of Zabbaiah, or I, Zabbaiah, carefully repaired the other section from the buttress to the door of the house of Elisha, the high priest. After him, Merimoth, the son of Uriah, the son of Kaz, repaired another section from the door of the house of Elisha to the end of the house of of Elisha. After him, the priest, the men of the plain, made repairs. After him, Benjamin and Hashub made repairs opposite their house. After them, Azariah, the son of Maaseiah, the son of Ananiah, made repairs by his house. After him, Benui, Benui the son of Hinadad, repaired another section from the house of Azariah to the buttress, even as far as the corner. Pe Elau, the son of Uz Ai, made repairs opposite the buttress and on the tower which projects from the king's upper house that was by the court of the prison. After him, Pe Aiah, the son of Parosh, made repairs. Moreover, the Neth in him, who dwelt in Opal, made repairs as far as the place in front of the water gate toward the east and on the projecting tower. After them, the Tekoites repaired another section next to the wall of the great projecting tower and as far as the wall of Ophel. Beyond the horse gate, the priests made their repairs, each in front of his own house. After them, Zadok, the son of Emir, made repairs in front of his own house, after him, Shemaiah, the son of Shech and Aiah, the keeper of the east gate, made repairs. After him, Hanani, the son of Shelemiah, and Hanun, the sixth son of Zalaf, repaired another section. After him, Meshulam, the son of Berechakiah, made repairs in front of his dwelling. After him, Malachijah, one of the goldsmiths made repairs as far as the house of Nethanin and of the merchants in front of the Mikad gate as far as the upper room at the corner. And between the upper room at the corner as far as the sheep gate, the goldsmith and the merchants made repairs. <gasps> aya, aya, aya. All right. So... Then Elisha, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priests, and built the sheep gate. They consecrated it and hung its doors. Um, now here's a picture of the gate. We have the sheep gate, six gate, old gate, battle gate, the booth gate, dumb gate. Sheep gate, and there's a lot here. A lot of people say, hey, this Nehemiah 3 is about organization and how you get things done, and that's true. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but these gates uh, really represent the gospel. And um, so that's more the direction that we'll head. Um, so If you'll notice that um, the sheep gate, when we see all these other gates built, it'll say that they hung its bolts and its bars. 
All right, there isn't any on this gate. Why is that? Because we can come to the to the to the King freely. Um, there's no salvation is freely available. It's the only gate to be consecrated. So I looked up uh, consecration. Um, and then the definition of it is the action of declaring bread and wine to be or representation of the body and the blood of Christ. So this was the only gate that they consecrated. So I thought that was a cool little nugget. Elisha means God will restore. All right, so we know that Jesus was what? He was the lamb. And where did, where did, where did the lambs have to go to get slaughtered through the sheep gate? So what did Jesus have to do? He had to go through that gate and had to be slaughtered. And then we come down to the next gate, which is the fish gate. So let's read on. Um, they consecrated the tower. Uh, they, they built as far as the Tower of the Hundred. And the Tower of the Hundred uh, is, like, is, a, is about 150 foot tall. Uh, and 100 cubits, 150 foot tall. But it's the pulpit of full abundance. And the Tower of Hanel... Uh, means God is gracious. So salvation includes preaching in the full abundance of his grace. Um, but uh, they built it as far as the Tower of the Hundred and consecrated. Then they built it as far as the Tower of Hanel. Next to Elisha, the men of Jericho built. And next to them, Zakor, the son of Emir, built. Also the sons of Hesan, Nah built the fish gate. They laid its beams, hung its doors with its bolts and bars. Next to them, Merimoth, the son of Uriah, the son of Koz, made repairs. All right. Fish, that's where they brought, you know, exactly. That's where they brought the fish in the day. Um, so the fish gate, what does it represent? The death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Um, in Matthew twelve forty, uh, Jesus said, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And Hassaniah means thorny and the, the pricky, the sting. And 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty five is, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? And we know, you know, the symbol for uh, Christians is the what's it ith, ithkis, the ichthus, which is which is the symbol of the fish, um, and you know we are fishers of men, so you know uh, as I was thinking about this, I was uh, you know thinking about fishing when we go out fishing, um, you know we cast a line, and some of us you know if you ever been fishing with a buddy and he's just lucky, he's sitting there reeling the fish in, and you're like man come on. But it's, it's kind of like that way, you know, as we're fishers of men and, and uh, we're walking out this walk with the Lord, um, our, indi our individual walks. And, and some of us may be uh, more, um, um, I'm trying to think of the word to say, but uh, uh, some of us have the ability or the gift to proclaim the gospel uh, more than others. Um, and some of us, uh, you know, people will be, see the gospel in us by our actions or what we do, our friends and our family. Um, but, you know, getting back to that fishing analogy, you know, um, you know, a lot of us, you know, some of us may never see somebody come to Christ. And there'll be some people that see come to Christ all the time and say, you know, seven times a person has to hear the gospel. So, you know, you may be that person that just sits there and is just lines just sitting there all the time. And you, you never see that bite. You might get a little nibble, but you never reel that thing in. And then there's somebody else that, you know, and just maybe just reeling them in all the time. But, you know, again, um, you know, it's, we can't get frustrated with that. We just got to know that, um, you know, that you know, like as Isaiah 55, 11, it says, so shall my word be uh, that goeth go forth out of my mouth shall not return uh, to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So we always know that, you know, God's word, when it goes, goes out, it's going to produce fruit. Um, but the fish gate. So next to them, Merimoth, the sons of Uriah, the sons of Koz, made repairs. Next to them, 
Uh, Meshulam, the sons of Berechiah, uh, the sons of Meshezebel, made repairs. Next to them, Zadok, the son of Bana, Banana, <laughs> Banana, Ba'an, uh, or maybe it's Banana, I don't know, made repairs. Next to them, the Tekoites made repairs, uh, but their nobles did not put work, put, did not put their shoulders to the work of the Lord. Oops. Now here's somebody in scripture that is forever called out by the Lord that they didn't put their shoulders uh, to the work of the Lord. So you can imagine, it's like this church build. Now here we are talking about building again. Here I am again. So maybe I won't repeat myself. I'm going to try not to. Um, but I'm sure, you know, as, this, as we did the church build, um, man, there was a lot of people here. And I was new, so, you know, I'm sh- I don't know if, if there were people that didn't put their uh, shoulder into the church build. There probably was. I didn't know it. Um, but I know there was a lot of people that did uh, put forth the effort. And another thing I wanted to mention was that the priest, if you'll notice um, in this first verse, that the priest actually helped build the wall. And I know not on this one. Now, I know the pastors, Pastor Kevin, Pastor Mike, Pastor D.A., um, Pastor Jim, all the pastors were helping here build. I mean, doing the projects just like uh, the high priest was. And I know that Pastor David on the other building physically at that time uh, was working. Um, so it was just an example. You know, we, we, we're here to serve, not to, not to be served. And, you know, the high priest uh, was just a fine example of that. You know, they all, this whole community, put forth an effort to, to build that wall. And I know when we were doing the church build, it just seemed like that, I mean, I think we had like over 800 people, eight, close to 900 people serve. And, uh, you know, everybody, you know, we all have our own giftings too. And all these people that are mentioned here, um, you know, you see goldsmiths and priests and, and um, you know, perfumers. Man, let me tell you something. If a perfumer's out there working on the wall, come on now. <laughs> I don't think he lifts a whole lot of heavy stuff when he's, doing the you know mixing this little perfume up but uh anyway um let's see verse six also uh, you know I, there's times and there's seasons you know with our giftings um you know lots of times in life we we got you know times in our life where we got a lot of things going on and and we can um you know, stop serving the Lord, or maybe not put as much effort uh, into it. Um, and there'll be those seasons. You know, we'll all have those seasons. Um, but you know, we need to just continue. I'm um, like y'all are doing, just to continue to just put that one foot, uh, one foot in front of the other. Continue to come. Sometimes we don't feel like coming. Sometimes we don't feel like serving. Um, but we still keep doing it and pushing through it. Like in the valley, we're coming up to the valley gate. And uh, here in a minute, and we'll, we'll talk more about that. But, um, you know, we need to put our shoulders to the work of the Lord, but use the gifts that he's given us. Moreover, Jehadiah, the son of Pesha, Pesha and Meshulam, the son of Besodiah, repaired the old gate. OG, that's where I was messing with the OG, the old gate. They hung and laid its beams, its doors with its bolts and bars. All right, the old gate. The old gate represents the end of the old covenant um, and the beginning of the new covenant. You know, Jesus' death, it was really an overpayment for man's sins. Um, Jesus replaced the old covenant with his new covenant. Those who believe uh, did not need not die. Um, 1 Corinthians uh, 2 um, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any one is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Um, the Lord has not just made us a new creation, but one day make everything new. Revelation 21, 4 through 5 it says, There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things have passed away. He who has seated on the throne said, I'm making everything new. So praise God. One day everything will be new. So, you know, 
And we know that the old is the new concealed and the new is the old revealed. And here's a prime example, you know, of, of this right here. Um, And when Jesus in Matthew five seventeen said, I did not come to abolish the law or the prophets. I came to fulfill them. And, you know, we still look back to the old because, you know, Western society is built on the Ten Commandments. So without the old, you know, I don't know where we would be. Um, but uh, let's continue on. And next to Melatiah, the Gibeonite, Jadon, the Mero, Meronathite, the men of Gibeon and Mizpah repaired the residence of the governor of the region beyond the river. Next to him, Uziel, the son of Herahiah, one of the goldsmiths made repairs. There you go, Craig. Craig had a piece of gold. There they go. So you... Also, next to him, Hananiah, one of the perfumers, made repairs, and they fortified Jerusalem as far as the broad wall. I was thinking, man, how cool would it have been if they put the perfumers working on the dung wall? <laughs> I'm like, why did you not do that? That would just been cool. And them guys would have been smelling good. You could have been working. That. That's another thing, you know. They didn't have any, uh, you know, underarm deodorant. And that. So I guess if you're working next to the perfumer, that is not a bad job. That would be a good job. I was like, why couldn't it have been next to the dung gate? That would have been awesome. Um, and next to them, Rephaphiah, the son of Hur, leader of the half district of Jerusalem, made repairs. Next to them, Jedidiah, or Jediah, the son of Harumpha, made repairs in front of his house. And next to him, Hatush, the son of Hab Hashabinah, made repairs Malkajah Malkajah the son of Harim and Heshav the son of Path Moab repaired another section as well as the tower of ovens uh, the tower of ovens is where they baked the bread and next to them Shalom the son of Halawesh the leader of half of the district of Jerusalem he and his daughters made repairs and that's cool I mean, why did God put that in there? Number one, you just think about the ladies here. I, and I don't know, I never looked at the math, but I don't know that there weren't more women serving here than men. Could have been. I, I just I didn't pay any attention to that. But I do know one thing. There was a lot of women that fed us, and they fed us every day for six months. They fed us breakfast, they fed us lunch, and they fed us dinner. So don't think that, you know, behind the scenes, these women are really, feet, you know, the, the, this could not have been done without the women. And I think it's cool right here that, especially with all the guys that have a bunch of daughters I'm looking at right here, um, that they mention that. And I think, you know, for women, they're like, hey, yeah, you know, we can go out there and lay stones and serve the Lord physically. Ah, uh, so what was it? Sunday, I'm turning the corner in town. And this guy's got Timothy 2.12 on his front of his car. So I'm like, Timothy 2.12. And I think it was, uh, what, don't let uh, women teach. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's, I, I wonder what his wife thinks of that. I just I looked it up. But anyway, I was thinking, I wonder what he would think about this in Scripture. Women ought not to be building the wall. But, uh, yeah, look it up. I think it's Timothy 2.12. <laughs> I was like, hey, Timothy, what is that? And I looked, and I just started laughing. Uh, but anyway. Um, okay, here we go. Hanun and the inhabitants of Zenoa repaired the valley gate. They built it, hung its doors and its bolts and bars, and repaired a thousand cubits of wall as far as the refuse gate. Um, so we know Psalm 23. You know, um, 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and thy staff comfort me. Um, you know, the valley gate is, is his presence when we go through tests, trials, and tribulations. And, you know, we all know if you've been doing this long enough, been a believer long enough, you've been in the valley. And uh, I hate it. Don't like being in the valley. Don't want to be in the valley. But we all know eventually we got to, we got to go into the valley to get those things and get, and get refined. Um, go through that refining fire so that we can start coming on back up out the mountain. And interestingly enough, the valley gate is next to the dung gate. So when we go through the valley, we're like, hey, Lord, you know, I, don't, I don't know why I'm in here, or maybe I do. I, I'm sorry. I repent. Please forgive me and get me out of here. I don't want to be in here. Please, you know, and then, but, you know, it, as a believer, it's just an awful place to be. But then again, sometimes you're like, Man, when I was in the valley, dude, that was the sweetest time, man. I was just, you know, I've been there, man, serving the Lord. Just, oh, yeah. But, you know, we will, as believers, we'll be in the valley. That's just part of it. But Jesus is there. He's there. He's there with us. And that's the whole point. You know, sometimes if you stray away from Jesus, you're going to get in a valley. But I can promise you, as a believer, you'll be, you'll be scrambling for him. You'll be asking, praying, crying, and he'll be there. He'll be there to lift you up. And get you out of the valley in due season. <laughs> in due season. It may not be as soon as you want it to be, but. Numbers, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, Isaiah 63. Um, as the beast goes down into the valley and the spirit of the Lord causes him to rest. All right, so as the beast goes down into the valley and the spirit of the Lord causes him to rest. So you lead your people to make yourself a glorious name. At noon, and the inhabitants of Zenoa repaired the valley gate. They built it, hung its doors with its bolts and bars, and repaired a thousand cubits of the wall as far as the refuse gate. Sorry, I said that. Molchai the son of Rechab, leader of the district of Beth Hasarim, repaired the refuse gate. He built it, hung its doors with its bolts and bars. So here's the refuse gate. So we just talked about being in the valley and um, the refuse gate. So what Jesus has purged out of us, our carnal religious, religious, religious uh, self-righteousness. So when we're in the valley, we're trying to get rid of those things that uh, keeps us from God using us. Um, And I just had this analogy when I was thinking about the refuse gate, um, about people walking around with these doggy bags. Man, can't stand it. But anyway, so you've got these people walking their dogs. No offense to any of you that do. But they're holding these bags of poo, Pastor Kevin. No. <laughs> so they're holding these bags of poo, and they're walking around. And I think that's like us sometimes as believers. We'll pick up things, you know, all that stuff that we've, we've taken in from the world at some point in our life is still there. And if we're not careful, and the enemy knows our weaknesses, he knows exactly where he's going to try to get us. And if we're not careful, you know, we'll start to slide back those into that old self, into those old ways. And, you know, as we're walking around with these bags of poo, you know, it's 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 time to get rid of those that's what the the refuse gates for that's where they took everything out all the refuse all the rubbish out of this gate and that's the, kind of the same same analogy as hey man why walk around you know we don't we need to quit walking around with this stuff and it's just time to get rid of it um philippians uh three eight nine says yet yeah, indeed i also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness which is from God by faith.
Fountain Gate. Uh, Shalun, the son of Kohes, leader of the district of Mizpah, repaired the Fountain Gate. He built it, he covered it, hung its doors with its bolts and bars. And I got a question to ask y'all, um, and maybe the Holy Spirit will speak to y'all. I was sitting here and I was going, and this is the only gate as I'm looking that's covered. So I'm asking, I'm not telling. I'm like, so why did they cover the fountain gate? And I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, I'm like, Holy Spirit, help me out, let me know. why did, And I couldn't find it anywhere. But they covered the fountain gate for a reason. I'm thinking, is it, uh, you know, we got those fountains of water, you know, Jesus, you know, and John. He goes, but whoever drinks the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in, will be, will become in him a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life. And I'm thinking, you know, is, but is it, when we take that water in, is it a covering? Is that, is that a representative of the covering of Jesus covering us? You know, I don't know. But for some reason, they covered this gate. I'm just, so maybe I'll pray about it, or maybe you have an answer right now about, yeah, I got it. But anyway, just let me know if you figure it out. Um. John seven thirty eight thirty nine, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water, the fountain gate. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Say that again. The fountain gate. Living waters. Oh, did you just figure it out? Uh, John 7, 38 through 39. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. I got it, I got it, I got it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, the old... That's right. Yes, that, I would say that was it. There you go. I knew somebody. I was like, yeah, I think, I think you're right. I was like, well, I'll just ask somebody. Well, the Holy Spirit will speak to them. <laughs> I'm going to take that, yeah. Do what? Oh, what was the tie-in? Okay, I, I got you. So um, the gate, this is the only gate that was covered for some reason. Obviously, it's there for a reason, just like the daughters were there for a reason. Everything's in there for a reason. So the Holy Spirit had Nehemiah say, <laughs> Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit had Nehemiah right in there. Hey, they covered this gate. So all they're all gates. Why did they build a, a roof over this, over the fountain gate? And either Joel or Pastor Kevin um, said, hey, well, the gate, if the gate is covered, the, the living waters, the Holy Spirit wasn't available yet. And all this is about, all this is Old Testament. So this is a picture of Jesus and what's to come about probably 500 years, well, 500 and some years later. So the, all this is the sheep, the sheep gate, um, the, the old gate, the valley gate. You know, all these gates are representing Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So the fountain gate, you know, Jesus talks about the, the, the fountain, uh, right? Yeah, so he's talking about the fountain of, of, of living water. So that's it. That makes sense. 
No, no, I'm good with it. Hey, ain't, it's, I could not find it. Maybe, I'm surely we're not the only ones. Surely we're not the only ones that have all of a sudden said, hey, why is this? But then again, he, that other guy, you know what I mean? I've been showing, yeah, I mean, he's, God's pulling stuff out of him. Um, yeah, so he said, uh, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. For he who believes in me, as the scripture said, out of my heart will flow rivers of, of living water. I'm in John. He talks about the fountain. Uh, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. All right, after him, Nehemiah, the son of Azbuk, leader of half the district of Bezer, made repairs as far as the place in front of the tombs of David to the man-made pool and as far as the house of the mighty. After him, the Levites under Rehum, the son of Benai, made repairs. Next to him, Hashabiah, leader of the half district of Kelah, made repairs for his district. After him, their brethren under Bavai, the son of Henadad, leader of the other half of the district of Kelah, made repairs. And next to him, Ezer, the son of Jeshua, the leader of Mizpah, uh, repaired another section in front of the in front of the ascent to the armory at the buttress. After him, Baruch, the son of Zebai, carefully repaired the other section. I've from the house of the buttress to the door of the house of Elisha, the high priest. I can't remember which version I was reading it, but it said zealously in one version. So this one right here, the King James Version says, um, carefully, but I remember one saying he zealously, like, man, he, he was going at it. Um, After him, the priests, the men of the plain, made repairs. After him, Benjamin and Hashab made repairs opposite their house. Um, after them, Azariah, the son of Messiah, Mes Maaseah, uh, <laughs> uh, the son of Anan Ananiah, made repairs by his house. After him, Beninu. The son of Hinnadad repaired another section from the house of Azariah to the buttress as far as the corner. Peal, the son of Uzai, Uzai, made repairs opposite the buttress on the tower which projects from the king's upper house that was by the court of the prison. After him, Pediah, the son of Parash, made repairs. Now we're coming up on the water gate. Moreover, Nethanim, who dwelt in Ophel, and Nethanim is, uh, a, um, they were servants to the Levites, um, dwelt in Ophel, made repairs as far as, um, as far as the place in front of the water gate toward the east um, and on the projecting tower. After them, the section of Tekoites repaired another section next to the great projecting tower as far as the wall of Opel, the water gate. What does the water gate represent? God's word. Notice um, when we're reading about the water gate, what does it say? Moreover, the Nethanim who dwelt in Ophel made repairs as far as the place in front of the water gate toward the east and on the projecting tower. After them, the Tekoites repaired another section next to the great projecting tower as far as the wall of Ophel. Uh, do we see them talking about repairing the gate, putting bars and bolts on the gate? Nope. You know why? Because God's words always stand. That gate was standing there. Nothing was wrong with that gate. That's why. Nehemiah 8.1. Now all the people gathered to together as one man in the open square that was in front of the water gate. And they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded Israel. 
So the water gate is the word of God. Ephesians 5, 25, 27. Steve's got this coming up. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by washing her with the water through the word and to present herself, present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless. I thought that was cool. Beyond the horse gate, I hear Nora, yeah. Behind the horse gate, the priest made repairs, each in front of his own house. Let's check that gate out. The horse gate, a victorious Christ has won the battle against Satan and sin. 2 Corinthians 2.14, but thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal uh, procession in Christ and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. Revelation 19.11, I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With, his, with justice, he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. Romans eight thirty seven. No, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors uh, through him who loved us. So the horse gate was where they rode out into battle in Israel. That's, that was the horse gate. But the horse gate represents a victorious Christ. Y'all get that? After them, Zadok, the son of Imran, made repairs in the front of his own house. After him, Shemaiah, the son of Shechaniah, the keeper of the east gate made repairs. All right, so the east gate. Um, right now in Jerusalem, if you go to the east gate, you're not walking through it. It was a uh, Muslim sultan, uh, I believe back like 500 um, A.D. Yeah, 500 A.D. Um, cemented it up. He knew the scriptures. That's those trips. What? And so a Muslim blocks it up because he knows the Bible and he don't want Jesus coming back through the gate. And uh, I was just laughing at that. That's just, of course, you know, I, I don't want to go down that rabbit trail. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so, but, but the East Gate, Jesus is going to come back. It's across from the Mount of Olives. When Jesus comes back, he's going to come out of the Mount of Olives. He's going to split. And then he's strolling up through there. And the east gate is the closest to uh, the temple. Um, Shemaiah means, the guy that was in charge of this, means the hearing, obedient one. And we know that Jesus is the obedient one and the true keeper of the east gate. Uh, 2 Peter 1.19 And we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do you, do, you will do well to pay attention to it as to, a shine, as to a light shining in a dark place until that day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Um, and Jesus also rode, you know, Jesus also rode in the east gate on Palm Sunday. That was the gate that Jesus rode through, and Jesus is going to come back through it again. After him, Hananiah, the son of Shelemiah, and Hanun, the sixth son of Zalaph, repaired another section. After him, Meshulam, the son of Berechiah, made repairs in front of his dwelling. After him, Malchijah, one of the goldsmiths, made repairs as far as the house of Netinim and of the merchants in the front of the Mikpah gate. And as far as the upper room at the corner, in between the upper room at the corner, as far as the sheep gate, the goldsmith and the merchants made repairs. It, this gate is also called um, the inspection gate. 
it's the meaning of mikvah in the Bible. Um, it's actually a census. It was actually where the census was held by David. And that's in Samuel, Second Samuel twenty four nine and First Chronicles twenty one five. Um, appointment into positions. That's Second Chronicles thirty one thirteen in the appointed place. That's in Ezekiel forty three twenty one. And the big pie gate led into the temple courtyard, the appointed place of God's presence. And Matthew eighteen twenty. All right, so where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them, the appointed place.